hello hello welcome to another reading vlog today is tuesday april 20th i'm gonna be doing just a little little reading life vlog first things first is i am reading lilac girls by martha hall kelly half reading half listening to the audiobook i'm about 70% of the way done. So definitely should finish that up this week. It is a historical fiction with three different women and their perspectives. So it jumps between Caroline, who is a woman in America working for the French embassy when the World War II breaks out. It follows Kasia, which is a girl in Poland, and she is in the city when the Nazis take over Poland, and she gets taken to a concentration camp. And then the third female perspective is Herta, which is a German girl from Dusseldorf, and she is a doctor working at Ravensbrück, which is a women's concentration camp where they did terrible experiments and stuff on prisoners. So it follows their three different perspectives all throughout the war. It's okay. It's it's a little better than okay. It's fine. I'm liking it. I'm not loving it. I don't think it's amazing. I think the the big thing going for this book is that it's big. So there's some some stuff I'm looking forward to with the character development and the plot. Hoping to finish that. Went to the library today right before the grocery store and picked up some things from the library. I have Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. I haven't, I've seen this book everywhere, haven't read a lot of poetry, haven't read any of her stuff before. I'm really in the mood for like a short little book, you know? So I was inspired by Chantal from Intentional Life. She got her other book from the library as well, so this one was the one that was available at my library. Then I have The Martian by Andy Weir. I've been meaning to read this forever. This was my possibility book for Buzzwordathon's book for April, which was to read a book with space and galaxy terms. So I was gonna read The Martian. I definitely thought I was gonna listen to the audiobook because that's what people were hyping. But I realized one, it's only available on Audible, which sucks. And two, I really don't like the narrator because it's the same narrator who narrated Ready Player One. I just really didn't like that book and I really didn't like his voice. So I was like, I'm not gonna listen to The Martian. I'll read it. So got that from the library. And then The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is the book club pick for the late night book club with Noel, Elias, and Fictional Fates. I don't know if I'll get to it in April because it's a little bit of a chunky book, but this is one of those historical fictions that are on like the top historical fictions list and it's a book about books and about banned books and it's set in Spain. That's about all I know. And then on my way to the library and grocery store, I always, you know, maybe stop by little free libraries to see what they got and I found a couple things. Both of these I hadn't previously heard of, but their covers drew my eye because hello, yellow and orange. So the first one is called Little Labors by Rivka Galchin. I loved the size of this book. It's like a perfect, perfect size book. It's small, I don't know how to explain it, and I like the hardcover. So I looked on Goodreads. This is a contemporary poetic kind of book. I'm not entirely sure, but it is about babies and having babies. And the author wrote this book from her perspective and experience of having a baby. And she's like writing it in like short story format. I know that CJ from CJ Reads, who's a fellow Portland booktuber, gave this book four stars on Goodreads. It's the only person that I follow that read this book. She reads a lot of contemporary, which is not necessarily my vibe, but I'm open to contemporary and anyway, it was free. So that's why I picked it up. I actually started reading it because I was waiting for the library to open. It's kind of weird. I haven't read something like it before, but it's kind of interesting. I'm intrigued to expand my reading horizons. And then the other book that I got at a little free library today is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. I saw that this was read by a ton of people that I follow. I'm definitely behind, obviously not really heard about this book and no one's really talking about it. Maybe people were reading it several years ago. I think this is also kind of like a literary fiction and it follows Rosemary who is in college and she's dealt with some trauma of the family disappearing and now she has to like figure out her life. I don't know, sounds kind of interesting, honestly. Not probably totally what I would pick up, but people are rating it highly, so we'll see. If I don't like it, I'll just put it back in another little free library. And then the other thing I picked up in a little free library is 
Outlander season one. I love Outlander the book and I've watched the first season of the show. I don't really need to own this. Like who watches DVDs anymore? You know, no one, but I picked it up because it was there. So today I saw that my Pilia was completely turned over and I was so sad about it. So I had to put in the stick and I know that it's like not cute at all, but I care more about the health of my beautiful plant because I'm very proud of this one. I'm proud of how well it's done. It was teeny tiny when I got it and this light from this window has just really made it thrive. This is my little jungle. I'm also very proud of this plant. Also had it from a young age. There's literally Lexi hair and everything. And then this one I just saved from outside. I just plopped it in this little pot and it's going crazy. And there's a couple more succulents right here. This one's really cool. I like the way this one looks. These look like, these like feel like fingernails. It's weird. I mean, heck, if we're talking about plants, I'll show you another thing that I'm really proud of is my beautiful Monstera. Look at this leaf that came out all of the holes that were in it. If your Monstera has holes that come out, that's a sign that it is doing healthy. And there's another little leaf right here that just came out and that has a bunch of holes as well. I'm just living in my my jungle paradise. Wow, I kind of look like a hot mess today. Um, but that's okay, because I'm gonna shower this evening and I'll look better tomorrow. But I am actually about to get ready and leave to meet my husband at the gym. He just got off work and he's making his way. So we're gonna go to the gym. Dinner's postponed until after and then we'll make dinner together. whoa sunshine um back from the gym i really don't like working out i'm so unmotivated <laughs> but i mean it's good to like feel stronger and you know all that good stuff that comes with exercising yeah i'm just so unmotivated to work out but today was squats squ squat day and felt good about it we are making dinner we are making salmon pasta dish is what i'm trying to say with some asparagus and a kale salad lots of garlic lots of lemon lots of basil parmesan cheese lexi lexi you're not allowed to be on the counter do you smell the fish is that why gonna make some dinner and it's gonna be delicious dinner is served delicious salmon lemony basilly pasta kale salad romantic First bite. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> tasty? Very tasty. This is one of your favorites. Let's try the salad. Explosion of flavor. Light. Refreshing. <laughs> Come here, Lexi. Sit. High five. Yeah. She's getting some salmon too. Good. Ready? Spin. Sit. Good girl. That sunshine coming in. Oh, Lexi. Good morning. Go out. Hey, that's not how you say good morning. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> she is a lot more cuddlier in the mornings, but I guess she's hyper right now. She's usually much cuter than that. It's 6.50 a.m. My husband just left for work and I am going to do some reading. I like the slower morning, so I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and I'm determined to finish Lilac Girls. <laughs> Girls, I liked it 
so I'm gonna give it three stars. I think I was teetering between two and three. Like two for me is just like the book was okay, nothing special and maybe I had urges to put it down and just get through it, which I felt a little bit, but then I think the thing that took me to liking this book is the length of it and the information in here is based on a lot of true events that happened, so I did learn something from this book, but overall not like amazing. I wasn't a fan of the writing all that much and the stories just seemed very, what's the word? like not connected and bounced around too much. And I think it covered too many years in one book. And it essentially follows three separate women and their three separate stories. So it truly felt like three separate books. The characters, I just didn't, they weren't well-rounded for me. They were very one-sided and some of the plot stuff that happened just seemed like too convenient, you know, still like, a good book no regrets reading it glad i read it to know what it's about it was uh as it was a chunky one it's about like 480 pages yeah finish that right i got a package i've been waiting for this in the mail for a while this is totally an impulse purchase i saw on a girl that i follow she owns a store in portland called cupboard goods a really cute little shop in portland with ceramics and plants and other fun things to buy as gifts she's a ceramicist so she makes cups and bowls and plates and stuff like that she's on her feet quite a lot so she posted wearing these slip-ons and i like my birkenstocks but sometimes my feet hurt in them and they're quite hard so I got pillow slides. They're basically like Crocs and they are a lot more beigey and light yellow than I thought. I thought they were gonna be more like bright yellow, but let's try them on. They're kind of funny looking. It's probably makes see more of the color when I'm on the carpet. I mean, they're quite comfortable. I haven't ever owned Crocs, but I'm assuming these are what Crocs feel like. Hi, Lexi. My feet hurt if I walk around the house a lot without any shoes, and I'm a no shoes in the house kind of person. Like, you know, we take our shoes off when we get through the door. So these are gonna be like my house shoes. I don't really wanna wear them outside. They're kind of goofy, but they're kind of fun at the same time. I'll be just squeaking around the house. So the day is moving along. It's three o'clock. I just recorded a video and edited it. It's all about the B books that I own. It's going up tomorrow. So that was a fun thing to film. And now I'm just making dinner, I'm making some chili, the Ambitious Kitchen Best Healthy Turkey Chili. It's really good. I made this recipe many times. It's one of my favorites. I'm just going to be cooking dinner and while i'm cooking i am listening to malcolm gladwell's the tipping point i've listened to a few of his books last year that i really enjoyed love malcolm gladwell love his podcast and this is all about things that happen in our society that are the tipping point and so far just listening to a few minutes and it's about fashion trends and how just a few teens start wearing something somewhere in New York and then you know it only takes a certain amount of people and then there's a tipping point to where it becomes a trend and super popular. Definitely you can tell that he recorded this book earlier I'm listening to it and he's narrating it but it's a lot more monotone than what I'm used to hearing from him in his podcast and his more recent books he's a lot more like lively in his speech and narration this one's a little bit more monotone. Anyways so I'll be listening to that while I cook. about why I put on gloves because no one ever told me that you should not touch jalapenos or any kind of hot peppers with your bare hands when cleaning them and cutting them. I have learned from my mistakes. The first time I made this recipe, I cut up a jalapeno 
with my bare hands and like dug in there. I thought, oh, jalapenos are not that spicy, no big deal. And then, oh my gosh, my fingers were burning for like five hours. And I like put them in baking soda and all this stuff, but it was the worst thing. And apparently it's a thing, it's called jalapeno hands when you do that without gloves. Or, I mean, you could do it without gloves if you carefully avoid using your hands at all and do everything with a knife, but I'm too much of a noob for that. But that's why I use gloves because I have dealt with the pain of having hot jalapeno capsicum burning your hands. And I have eczema on my hands, so that's probably why they hurt worse than someone who doesn't. A little sour cream, onion, jalapeno, cheese, avocado, and then these from Trader Joe's are the best thing ever. This together, the best thing ever. just saw some of my girlfriends. We met up at McMinimins Edgefield, which is this cool like pub kind of place in Portland. They have a bunch of locations, but the one in Edgefield is really cool. We were discussing our last chapter of The Imperfect Disciple. I mentioned this in my last vlog. I actually finished the last chapter last week, but we went through week by week reading one chapter and then discussing it every week. Finished the book. This was a five-star Christian nonfiction book, a really good one, and it facilitated all of interesting conversations and discussions. I think I'm in charge of picking the next book, so I'm excited to do some research and pick a next good kind of like Christian nonfiction that everyone's talking about. Husband's calling. He just got home from work, so he wanted to know when I would be home. Like everyone else in the world, really into Taylor Swift's re-release of Fearless, Taylor's version. It's great. Obsessed with Forever and Always and Mr. Perfect with Fine. My top ones that I'm listening to at the moment. Hey, hey, good morning. It is Thursday, April 22nd. Happy Earth Day, by the way. After seeing some friends at McMinimins, I came home, went on a walk with my husband and my cat, watched some YouTube videos, had some dinner, did a little bit of reading, read a couple more pages in Little Labors, so making my way through that, and actually started a new book. Mentioned this in my most recent haul, Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. This is a book about understanding sex from a female perspective and all of all the things that have to go with it. Really informative, very interesting. So far, there's probably gonna be some stuff that I don't fully agree with or understand in here, but overall, I think it'll be very helpful coming from a background where we really weren't educated on sex and what is taught in school is not really enough information. We'll be reading that one maybe a chapter a day or so for a while because it's quite a big one. Besides that, I'm, I'm off to work today too, so hopefully we'll read more of The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell as well. But actually, in honor of Earth Day, I wanted to mention a few products that I love using that are sustainable, compostable, reusable, etc. Obviously not sponsored. And for the bathroom that are like really good bathroom swaps. So the first thing is my Goodwell bamboo toothbrush. I love this toothbrush. I originally got it at New Seasons, which is I'm like a natural grocery store here in Portland and really love it. I don't know if the bristles are compostable, but the toothbrush itself is. The bristles are really great. They don't like fall or break or I just, I love this toothbrush. It's fantastic. And the next bathroom swap is this by Humankind reusable floss. Well, the floss isn't reusable. The floss itself is compostable, but this container is reusable. You just pop off this silicone top and then this cartridge is refillable and this is compostable floss. And I found that it works just as great as regular floss. I like the idea of not having a million plastic things. This I still have for my husband, but eventually, hopefully, we'll just have these. The next thing is my reusable Q-tip. So this company, Last Object, actually, it started with Last Swab, is a company that I saw everywhere all over like Instagram and, and whatnot. I like the idea of not needing to buy whole packs of Q-tips. I know technically we're not supposed to use Q-tips for cleaning our ears, but you know everyone does anyways. But this is a reusable one has little like bumps on the edge, but you just 
to clean your ears and then you can wash it out and it's not that gross and it's not that weird to clean out your earwax like that. I've been using this for a little while and I like it. I would say the only thing is that it's not like drying. You know when you use a regular Q-tip, usually after a shower, you kind of feel like you cleaned all the like water out too so it feels like your ear is dry this one because it's not fabric it's like a silicone tip it doesn't dry your ear it just kind of grabs some wax and then it still kind of feels like your ear is wet but that doesn't I mean that's fine to get used to that it's it cleans out wax which is the important part and then by the same company last tissue technically i keep this in my purse really great for allergy season but these are reusable tissues i guess technically handkerchiefs like everyone used back in the day but basically it's this little pack and um well i'll start from this end this end is the clean tissues that you can take out it's this fabric tissue sized tissue you blow your nose you use it and then this one's already used that i have but there's this little divider that separates the clean tissues from the dirty tissues and you just take the dirty tissue and roll it up and stick it down to the top and then once you read the, reach the divider you can just throw these in the wash or hand wash i don't think it's that weird to rewash handkerchiefs with stuff on them we rewash towels kitchen towels I also use Thinks Period underwear, so like I'm rewashing that and rewearing it. It's not that weird to rewash tissues full of our snot and boogers. And then the last object that I'll mention is my organic cup. This is my menstrual cup and it comes in this cute little pouch, but love this thing. Recently switched about six months ago. Absolutely love it. Best switch. Never liked tampons and pads all that much and don't want to be throwing away so much of that stuff, but this thing is great. Super reusable. Obviously takes a little bit of getting used to, but other than that, it's, it's really nice. Paired with period underwear, best combo. Anywho, my random little sustainability haul. I would recommend those products because I so far have loved using them and find them a great swap and it feels good to have less trash and throw away less things. No one's perfect. These are just little things and literally starting with like one thing at a time. Still have a long way to go, but one step at a time. She's not always mean. Sometimes she actually shows love and affection and cuddles but only when she wants to <laughs> and only when she's sleepy hmm oh yeah you have a tough life got back from work it's the mid-afternoon i'm going to have some lunch some leftover chili look at her fluffs i hope you like all this cat content they're fluffy she doesn't like no Lexi <laughs> stop it hey don't ruin my sweater <laughs> so the day went by pretty quickly I ended up having to do a lot of random things and didn't get that much reading done I read a little bit of little labors today I'm a little over halfway I'll give more of my thoughts probably when I finish this book it's weird it's different very not used to reading these like stream of thought literary essays. It's just really out of my comfort zone. Tomorrow we'll see how it goes but I'm hoping to do some more reading and my sister is flying into town and I haven't seen her in so long so I'm so excited to see her and my nephew and niece. We'll see where the day takes us but I will see you tomorrow. Hello, happy Friday. This morning I drove quite a bit to deliver some honey at actually our first like official, official grocery store. So that's very exciting. And that took quite a bit of time in the car. So on my drive, I was able to finish the Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. It was about a three hour audiobook. His books are laid out as like case studies where he analyzes certain events or things that happened around the world or certain people and their circumstances and he ties them together to make a point. For this book, I liked it. It wasn't my favorite of his. I gave this book three stars, thought it was solid, nothing totally like profound or amazing. I need to eat some lunch. I was going to read more of Little Labors and I actually checked my YouTube today and I won a giveaway and I never win giveaways. But I'm part of the, I think it's called Adventures in History Book Club by 
Angie from the Science Mama. It's a historical fiction book club that I joined. I haven't been able to read April's book pick, which was The Four Winds, even though I have that book. Maybe I'll start it next week. But overall, I'm very excited to join because she has a lot of great picks and I love historical fiction and it's a more of a diverse range of historical fiction. But she was doing a giveaway for The Children's Blizzard, which is a popular book that I've seen circulating around booktube. I won it and I'm very exciting because I don't win anything. Thanks Angie, very much appreciate that. So I'm back, same spot, but a few hours later. I did have lunch, but in a surprising turn of events, when I thought that I was gonna read more of this book, I instead really wanted to pick up Milk and Honey. This was on my nightstand and I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about this book. I just want to pick it up and read it. So I did in one sitting. It took me probably about like half an hour. So it's very short. It is a book of poetry. And that was a very interesting experience. I will say this. I think the author writes her poetry beautifully. This book is broken up into four sections. The hurting, the loving, the breaking, the healing. The hurting was like five stars. The healing was maybe like a 4.5 loved those two sections the loving and the breaking just not for me i felt very similar to reading normal people the issues i had here was just like i do not agree with this person's philosophy on sexuality and so the loving part it was extremely sexual just a warning if that's not what you want to read about and then the breaking was sad i've never experienced heartbreak like in a romantic sense in that kind of way so i couldn't relate and also just I don't really agree with the philosophy of like one person completing you and you look to other humans, particularly men, to like fulfill you and make you whole and complete you and why breakups hurt so much if you guys do sleep together. Like all of this kind of stuff, I don't know. I just don't agree with, I guess. And so I landed on three stars with this because I liked it to read in one sitting and I wanted to read through it. There are definitely a couple poems actually that I really loved. I thought this one was good. Love is not cruel, we are cruel. Love is not a game, we have made a game out of love. That's like the epitome of this book. And then I liked this other one as well. Most importantly, love. Like it's the only thing you know how. At the end of the day, all this means nothing. This page where you're sitting, your degree, your job, the money, nothing even matters except love and human connection. Who you love and how deeply you love them. How you touch the people around you and how much you gave them. I'm glad I read it. I think I still would pick up her other poetry works. She has two other books. Interesting that I wanted to pick this one up instead of this one i think this is maybe just a little bit too weird for me this book is about a woman writing about motherhood and her perspective of her baby but also babies in literature particularly japanese literature and it's just so like disjointed and jumpy and all over the place it's really hard to follow what she's writing about and understand what i'm reading but i'm gonna finish it i finished little labors uh it was weird not my kind of book i realized i think i came into it open-minded but it was just kind of it was just strange for me i ended up giving it two stars it's just it's just not my kind of book i think the next physical book that i want to read is the martian by andy weir got this from the library. I want to read this because I said I was going to read it for Buzzwordathon, and I'm also just in the mood to read this. I've watched the movie and I've loved I love the movie with Matt Damon. I watched it a long time ago, so I don't remember all the details of what went down, but I feel like I'm going to like this. That will be my next physical book. I'll hopefully start this tonight. Hey, hey. So, it's the evening and had a great rest of the day. Hung out with my sister and my nephew and niece. We went to the park, had some ice cream, had dinner, played some games, hung out with my husband a bit. We did an ab workout, didn't film any of that, but I did start The Martian. I am a couple chapters in and I'm enjoying it so far. Again, I've watched the movie so I know where the story goes, but it's been a while. My only concern is that it's like too sciencey and technical, right? So it's a guy who gets stuck on Mars. He is an engineer and a botanist and he's trying to figure out how to survive until the next mission comes and potentially rescues him. And he's trying to like fix communication and grow food. And it's interesting. It's just like so sciencey that I'm like, I don't 
really care about all of this technical information. So I'm wondering how it continues or if it's going to be like that technical throughout the whole thing. Yeah, I'm just going to continue reading for, I don't know, another hour. No official plans for the weekend. I think it will be a more chill weekend, which I'm not mad about. So it is bedtime. It is 11 p.m. on Saturday and I didn't vlog anything today. Partially because I didn't do a whole lot and also because the stuff I did just didn't feel like vlogging, but I wanted to give an update. I am on page 133 of The Martian. I've been reading this, really enjoying it. I mentioned yesterday that the first 50 pages were a bit like too sciencey for me and I was a little worried. Obviously this is science fiction, so should have known better. But it basically is this guy just trying to figure out like physics and chemistry and math. And he's just working out these long complicated problems and writing them out as like journal entries. I understand that it's necessary for the story, but I was a little worried without giving anything away. Right when I was like getting like, okay, what else is going to be in this book? Or is it just going to be this? It got good and i got invested for this guy to survive i'm hoping to read quite a bit more of it tomorrow happy sunday i am remembering to vlog again don't know how much i will but doing a little bit gonna do a check-in i read more of the martian this morning and i got about half away it's definitely creeping into five star territory because i don't want to put this book down and i'm like very invested for this character to survive on mars and i think it's well written and it's written just enough to keep you wanting more and keep you wanting to read the next page other than that it's kind of you know errand day got laundry we're gonna make food for the week. We started New Girl last night, watched a couple episodes, and I think it's hilarious. It's really fun. So I'm excited about that. Excited that we started a new show and like a fun show. So maybe we'll watch a little bit of that today. But yeah, Sundays are usually more like chill, relax, prepare for the week ahead kind of days. <laughs> Hey guys, so it is time for bed and I just wanted to give a quick check-in. I only have 50 pages left of The Martian, so definitely going to finish this tomorrow and I'll do a full recap tomorrow of all the books that I read this week. This evening was nice. We made some pho, or I should say the people that are staying with us, they primarily made it and it was really delicious. Tasted like the real thing and we had a little mochi taste test. We watched a couple episodes of New Girl. We played Azul, the board game. It was a good evening. I'll, uh, I'll see you at my next book check-in tomorrow. It is now Monday. I'm gonna wrap this vlog up because it is way too long, but I just wanted to give a quick rundown and recap of what I read this week. I finished four physical books. I don't know how that's possible. Granted, two of them are tiny, but still. And I was more than halfway through with this one, so... But it's still a big feat in my opinion. The very first book that I finished is Lilac Girls by Martha Hall Kelly. This was a historical fiction that I gave three stars. I thought it was solid but it had some issues in there for me and it was a good story, just not my favorite. Then I finished Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. This is a collection of poetry. I also landed on three stars even though I read it in one sitting and enjoyed it for the most part. I had some issues with like the philosophy and content of this writing that just I didn't fully agree with but I do want to pick up more of her work. Then I finished Little Labors by Rivka Galchin. This is a book that I found in a little free library actually at the beginning of this week and I finished it up. This is a collection of essays, short stories, poems, vignettes, random thoughts, and journal entries. I don't really know how you describe it. It was a little too weird for me. I gave it two stars. This was just a contemporary literary piece of work that just I couldn't wrap my mind fully around of what it was actually about. So I'll probably be giving this one away to a little free library soon. Then the audiobook that I finished this week is The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference by Malcolm Gladwell. I also landed on three stars, so I guess a pretty average reading week overall. I've read a lot of Malcolm Gladwell's work and enjoy them. This is one of his earlier works, it was written in 2000, and it was all about the tipping point and trends and why things become viral without really talking about viral because this was like pre-internet and iphone and social media it was a solid read three stars 
nothing profound and then finally the martian by andy weir i finished this this morning read it in three days so i'm very proud of myself but this was a five star read i was very surprised i mean i went into it with high expectations because everyone loves this book i am not a sci-fi reader so i was very pleasantly surprised that i also fell into that category overall thoroughly enjoyed it, it was very page turning didn't want to put it down i was rooting for the main character it made me tear up in the end it was a little bit too sciencey sometimes so i mean it's probably like a 4.75 if i'm gonna be that analytical but really fun enjoyed that one that wraps it up thank you so much for tuning in and watching a week in my life and all the random things that i got up to i'm proud that i read so much this week and here's hoping for more good reading weeks ahead i will see you guys in another video soon bye